All right. And welcome to In the Future. Sorry, I had to cut that music off because <laughs> it's not our, officially our intro. Uh, but welcome to episode number 16, where we're going to discuss senior housing shortage and how important that is. I mean, given that Max and myself have parents that are now in this age bracket, maybe a lot of the peers around us as well, we're in our 30s. Our parents are turning into their 60s and 70s, and even some have 80s. Um, so we can kick it off with a, a particular stat that Max shared with me. 10,000 Americans are turning 65 every day. So if you know what 65 means, it's really the, the senior, the age where you become a senior. And knowing that there's a housing crisis, knowing that many Americans don't really save for retirement, we start to think about what are the solutions to start to drive senior housing to improve it to be able to create possibilities for every individual that's retiring to have a home where they can start to live a quality, you know, a higher quality of life rather than, hey, let's go put them into a senior home, which by the way, is very expensive. Uh, I recently looked that up and it's, wow, it's more than rent uh, for many people that I know. Uh, what are your thoughts, Max, kicking off? Yeah, man, that's a great intro. So I, I just want to focus on the on that stat for a second because it's 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 kind of mind blowing when you when you really wrap your head around it. Ten thousand Americans are turning mm -hmm. sixty five years old every single day yeah. in this in this country. That's wild, that's, right? That's, that's that's insane. Yeah, ten ten. It's daily, right? Ten ten thousand daily. daily. It's it's are not turning, monthly. And, and, it's, and it's and and it's measured by them. Yeah, but but like. Um, so they're, they're, it's, not, it's not only that they're retiring and leaving the workforce and the impacts of that. Mm -hmm. It's the fact that they're actually turning 65. And then yeah. um, what are the consequences of that? Right. Like, so you, you are now all of a sudden living on fixed income. You no longer have a, mm -hmm. a weekly paycheck that comes in. Um, you're you're participating in society in a very different way. You're and, and so it's interesting to just kind of think about all the different impacts of, of what the statistic actually means. But mm -hmm. the, the one that you want to focus on is where are they all going to live, right? right. When, when, when you have a fixed income, uh, you know, there, there's really only two paths in terms of where, where you're living. You either have a house, which you have mm -hmm. been pay, paying off for, you know, like the last 30 years. And n now you're, um, maybe, maybe you're, maybe you no longer want to live in that house, right? That maybe it's too mm -hmm. big for you. So maybe you won't need to downsize, which a lot of people tend to, tend to do around that age. Um, it also might be an affordability issue, right? Because other than paying off the house, you still have taxes that you have to pay every single year. And those taxes continue to rise on a fixed income. Can you continue to afford that? And then there's people who don't have a house, right? They've been kind of, you know, um, let's say renting. So what happens with them? And most importantly, once you hit a certain age, can the human body, you know, just can it sustain living independently? Right. Or do you need to become dependent on someone, whether it's a home attendant who comes and helps you out, for, um, you know, part time or like you said, you have to kind of move out. Right. You have to move into a senior um, living facility, not mm -hmm. only to your point, are they very expensive, but they're not that great right? for, for mo unless you're live unless you're living in, in, in a in a high end uh, senior facility, they kind of suck. Right. I don't know if yeah. you've ever visited anyone in them, but the, the lighting is, is not great. No. They're all they're all kind of just like stuck in this one room in, in the cafeteria. And expensive, by the way, I, from from what I understand, they seem very expensive, very, very expensive. And you don't really yeah. get quality care. And as a result of living in a place like that where you don't have, you know, dedicated attention, uh, what happens to your brain? Right. What happens to your social mm -hmm. skills? Right. All of those things really kind of take a toll on on your life. Mm -hmm. Um. And so I, I think this is just a fascinating topic because, it, you know, at some point, every single one of us is going to deal with this, whether we're going to be in that situation or are someone in our family or someone in our, in, uh, you know, who, who we just know is already living in that situation. Mm -hmm. um, so let's let's dive in. Let's dive in. What do you think? Yeah, well, I, the, the one thing I wanted to think about is uh, bring up is, is something that you called out, which is you mentioned seeing this advertising or this billboard for this concept. Check it out. Rent a grandpa, which sounds yeah. to me sounds crazy. I mean, I can't. I would imagine. I don't know how much appeal that has for the general young youth, right? Like that could be very cool for some. Like, oh, I can learn from this this elder um, 
but to me, maybe it's not as crazy as it sounds, right? As as housing gets expensive, maybe it makes sense. But I'll, I have a question for you when it comes to that. Max, when you think about renting a grandpa, what <laughs> – what do you, who do you, you know, imagine who that person is, right? Like, I, and, and, and like, what are the biases that we have when we say rent a grandpa? Like, do you really, is it going to be like a Warren Buffett grandpa? Is Probably it going to, you know what I mean? Probably not. Is it going to be like this uh, intellectual, very smart grandpa that can tell you, you know, guide you through life as a mentor? I don't know, right? Like the, the gut feeling when we see rent a grandpa is, are with biases included and it's probably you're thinking oh it's like a probably somebody who's a little senile or starting to like can't really depend on on oneself probably wants to talk all day about topics that you don't really care about right that that's where my mind goes but i wonder what like what do you think about that i kind of want to look this advertising up let, let, let me just <laughs> uh it let me let me just define what this poster was before we go too far off track so it's not, yeah, it's yeah, not, it's not necessarily that you're renting a grandpa uh, the poster, okay. which is actually an idea that I think we should talk about um, l- later in this episode, yeah. because I have some thoughts on that too. But the poster that I, the not poster, um, like the, the billboard, the billboard. That I saw, it, was, it was like a, a bus, uh, a bus billboard. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and it was in New York City and in, in Manhattan. And it was basically suggesting that, so it was, it was saying two things. It wasn't exactly saying that there's a housing shortage. Um, mm-hmm. Or that the affordability was an issue, but it was saying um, that hey, you can split your rent with an with a senior, and you can live in an apartment with an older person, like a stranger, and mm-hmm. that allows a, a couple of things, right? I think there's a couple of benefits there. Number one, obviously, rent reduction. Uh, so part of it is going to be subsidized yeah. by the state, which is great. Uh, the person, maybe it's I don't know, someone who just immigrated to to the U.S. or someone who just has lower income and and they're trying to get get on their feet. Um, yeah. why wouldn't you take advantage of that? Right. I also think the, 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 very positive benefit of the, or the other positive, positive benefit of that is for the senior, you have, um, you have someone, they have someone to talk to, right. They have emotional companionship person, support very, to some very extent, crucial, right? Very crucial. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's to, to, to a large extent. Um, I love that, so yeah. not, not only do they get to talk to them, um, but what I've noticed in the U S unlike other countries, like let's say Japan, um, they, we don't, we don't have as much respect for the elderly elders and the, and the, and the wisdom that they carry. Right. I I think that's where my, my bias went by the way, Mm -hmm. when I described that. Yeah. yeah. And, and, but it, but it's very, it's very true and and it's very blatant. Right. Uh, Mm -hmm. you know, like, like I, not only, not only is it rude that that's a whole other topic, but, um, (laughs) we just kind of write them off. Right. It's like once you hit a certain age, you we treat old, old people as if they don't offer value to society. And that's not true. Mm-hmm. It, it's actually completely false. Um, mm-hmm. And it, it's, it's not like we can correct that. That's just, you know, some things that are ingrained in society. But this is an opportunity for younger people to interact on, on a very personal level with this person that they're living with. What yeah. doors can that open? Does that older person potentially have a network that they can help this person mm-hmm. tap into, right? Like someone living in college or a student. Um, yeah. So I, I think that mentally and socially, there's very um, good good positives from, from from this like domesticated thing. Um, can I just say one note on that really quickly? Yeah. Um, what came to mind when you were saying that though, is like, we don't respect elders and you'd mentioned... Um, the fact that we kind of write them off. I feel that especially in present time, 2024, where there's a generational, almost like conflict that's being uh, displayed in the media, Mm. I feel like most young people would have that bias immediately. And and maybe vice versa. I think think elders, the elders would probably be more tolerant in in the sense of like, you know what, I just want, I just want somebody to be, with living with my with me and so i can live off my um you know my my retirement but i can see a lot of young people being like oh i'm not living with a boomer or you know somebody who conflicts with my view you know my progressive potentially progressive views and assuming that not all young people are progressive but it, you know i feel like there could be this there's this bias of the generation between the two which would 
I mean, would make this harder to achieve or, or really kick off this program, I think. But like you, I think there's a lot of wisdom and, and experience to be gained. From yeah, being able to- I, and, and I think... Th- I, I think people who are going to be part of this program are going, it's going to be strictly a financial thing, right? If, if you're totally. telling me that the government will pay 80% of my rent and mm-hmm. in exchange for that, I just have to live with an, with an older person. Okay. Mm-hmm. That makes sense because your yeah. priority is to get on your feet to, you know, uh, build up your savings. So that, that makes sense. I think that the, 100%. That the positive consequence of that will be surprising to people in kind of what we're talking I agree. about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Next. As long as, and, and I'll add one more thing to that. I, I think another thing that has to be in that is like the key, the dynamic between the, the elder and the young person is that the elder cannot be, really behave like a parent. I think that that line needs to be drawn because I think a lot of people's initial reactions will also be like, I'm not. I, why would I do that? I can go just live at home if I'm going to have an older an elder person judging me for doing what yeah. I want to do and playing music loud or whatever it is. Right? He, it's essentially a roommate, right? It, it, I totally agree yeah. with you. It cannot be a parent relationship, uh, parent child relationship. It has to be a roommate, and totally, that's critical. Okay, so yeah. if we. Okay, so so we covered that um, the population kind of demographics are are, are shifting in a very big way. Um, mm-hmm. You're also seeing this in other countries, right? And, and in other countries, um, where, where's like that that I don't know the the actual term, but like the sandwich g- generation, where kids have to take is it like China or Japan, where where kids have to take care of both of their parents because there's no social security system. I think, uh, well, actually, when that when I think of that, I think of like most of Latin America or India. I don't know, maybe Japan too could be part of that. I'm sure Asia. I mean, there's a strong culture in Asia, Latin America. I'm not sure about Africa. Probably some parts of Eastern Europe where you um, you st- you you take care of your elders when they get older. Like you, more or less, they live with you, and families live together in a home. Mm-hmm. For a very long time, versus American or the most modern, uh, I'll call it modern Western way of living, which is, you know, you're oh, you're going to hot college. That's it. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, bye. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it might it, it might be any of those countries. Basically, is my point. Yeah. yeah so, so so that's that's kind of interesting, right? It's, it's sort of alluding to the earlier point um, uh, that it, a they appreciate the wisdom that that um, that their grandparents kind of bring to the to the full family dynamic, but more importantly, yeah. um, I could see it as, as a bit of a burden, right? Because there's no social security system um, there. And, and, you know, in, in some of these countries, um, they didn't have as, as much of a developed, uh, in some of these less developed countries, they didn't have as much of a career where they were, these people were able to accumulate wealth. So they have no actual Over savings time. to live up on. And so mm-hmm. not only does, um, you know, like let's say in, in a couple that, that's married, uh, not only does one person have to take care of the parent, not only does that couple have to take care of one set of parents, they have to take care of both sets of parents. That's a big burden. Yep. Um, so that's totally. so I, I don't think we really have that here. Um, I would say that actually kind of helps helps with things. Uh, this is why so many places does. have a lot of children as well, by the way. I was going to say children become that asset, that long-term mm-hmm. investment asset, or it's like, I'll have a, I think culturally it's always been like, oh, maybe I'll have a daughter or my eldest son will take care of us while my child number two, three, or four goes and marries off, right? Or like whoever my eldest child marries, I'm, I don't know why I'm saying eldest, but like I'm thinking like, I've heard this before, eldest child marries and then that wife or husband will live with us and take care of us while my other kids marry off. So yeah, I think that's kind of how that's been managed to your point. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, but it's very, so yeah, go ahead. Good. No, go ahead. Finish, finish that. Yeah, I was just going to say that. And, and I think for us, that's not the case at all. I, I do think though, we're seeing um, more, I think we're going to see, or we're starting to see, if I'm not mistaken, I think I saw the stat, a lot of younger kids uh, or young adults are starting to live with their parents or at home for much longer now. They're going so back, I wonder course, if this, yeah. yeah, so I wonder if there'll be this comeback of this cultural comeback where it's like, yeah, you live with the family for a long time because it's just financially speaking, it, it's strategically, it makes the most sense 
for you to it's actually still so ta- later it's still on so taboo out. in this country though that's that's the issue right and, and taboos are hard to right. uh push back against it's like generational changes um but i agree with you yeah why so why is it taboo why is it taboo you think or like what what about it what is it just? Does it look like you're a failure in our culture if you're still living so. at home? I think I think I think that mentality that is just so in, ingrained in our society um, that if you didn't, you know, move out by thirties, I guess, um, yeah, yeah, or or even earlier than that, then you know, you're you're kind of you didn't make it, right? But if you look, it's it's okay. interesting. Uh, if if you look at other species, right, like birds you know like um and just kind of compare it to that um you know i don't actually know where i was going with that particular <laughs> particular example what they leave their it. kids early well because because i was, I was gonna early. say birds but birds actually like they kick their, their their kids off early um so we'll just disregard that one but go, 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 <laughs> yeah, go, yeah. Going, going back to, to the other point that i was making okay so we know that there's this senior shortage, uh senior housing home shortage, shortage. Yeah, yeah. And, and and also home shortage in general. Like, let's take New York for example. Affordable places to live very hard to come mm-hmm. by. Um, and then if you layer on top of that, you know, again, a fixed income for for older people, um, it's a problem, right? I, I recommend people mm-hmm. listening to this to, to just Google like senior housing shortage. See the things that you that that come up right away. Um, New York City is actually the first one that comes up for me, probably because I'm we have geo- wait, we geo- have some tag. of the shortage. We- in New York uh, has some we, of the we're in New York by the way, but New York has some of the most senior housing shortages. Is that what it is? It's just that it's just that it's in short supply. Um, okay, and and, it, and, it. and it's and it's a real real issue. And then if it, just like I'm reading the high level articles like NPR, millions mm-hmm. of seniors struggle to afford housing. Uh, just fourteen percent of older adults living alone could afford a daily visit from a home health aide. According to a Harvard mm-hmm. analysis across 97 metro areas, and then it's just like Forbes: the crisis and opportunity in the assisted living shortage. So. You know, you, if 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 we all agree that there's a housing shortage, especially for seniors, mm-hmm. what happens to them? Right, they're not just going to go off on an island somewhere. Um, they <laughs> yeah. have they have to be housed. So senior um, facilities, a they have to get built, which means to to build them, you need um, you need land, right? L- land mm-hmm. land that's, that that needs to get developed. It needs to be marketed. Those people then need to move in there. Um, but right now there, there's also a shortage with those facilities. Okay. Uh So I, what, what do you do with, with these, with this population? Um, there's, there's a very interesting conversation that I had with the founder of, um, can mobilities. I interviewed Uh him about a, a technology, uh, yeah, so so, the, so they developed a, a smart cane, which is like a, a, in the category of assisted mm-hmm. devices. And the reason they did that was okay. We can't both have our cross, our arms crossed. Um, and and, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. the reason the reason they they worked on that, and I think is just a fantastic product. And and I'll link to the to the article and interview uh, in 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 the in the post um, mm-hmm. is because th- the main solution that that older people have mm-hmm. is you just live in place a little bit longer. Right, you you buy as much time living in your own house or in your own apartment where you're independent or semi-independent, and just try mm-hmm. to buy time before you have to go to a senior facility where a nurse is going to take care of you around the clock. That's a very interesting growing business, like assistive devices to help people, whether it's elevators to to help you conquer stairs or these smart canes that, um, like like the the can go smart cane, it mm-hmm. tracks your steps. It has a phone built into it so that if you do fall outside or something, it just like th- that there's a speaker in the in the cane and 911 will call mm-hmm. you or your nurse or your loved one will call you and check in on you. Um, so, so it's just it's, it's just very fascinating what technology can do to help solve some of these issues and allow mm-hmm. seniors to live in place a little bit longer. I think that's a fascinating, yeah. highly growing category. That's one thread. I think that's one thread to solve. And I think that's an, that's an amazing application of technology to solve that first thread. The first thread is seniors who happen to have housing at the moment, they have housing where they can stay in place um, or steady housing and don't necessarily have the pressure to move out, just need really some support and assistance and maybe some, uh, some, maybe some emotional support and technology can maybe help bring that solve for that, that first thread where they can get, Help, like you mentioned, support. Emergency happens immediately. We we can track what's happening to them. 
much like, you know, having the, just be proactive about it. And then also be able to have digital communication at all times, right? So this is apart from the can can that you mentioned, but being able to do video calls with the fan, you know, with, with younger family members or maybe community, if seniors can really, I think this is not going to be a problem so much for us as it is for the seniors now, they can really embrace digital communities. They can feel less lonely. They can speak to people more. They can stimulate their, their, their social muscle, which I think is important, which by the way, is a reason why when I think about retirement, I'm always thinking like, I know it sounds like a lot of people like to retire in a, in a house with a big yard far away from everybody. I'm always, I'm always thinking like, I'd like to retire somewhere where there's a like strong community and walkability where as an old person, I can walk out, get coffee, see, you know, cross the street, yeah, um, see people walking yeah. around and engaging so that I stay stimulated once I'm older. So going back to the point though, that that's 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 thread number sorry, one. Sorry. Thread can, number, can, I, can, I, yeah, can I interrupt yeah, you for one see. second? To, to, yeah, to the point that you, that, you, that you just made, uh, very, very crucial. I highly recommend that people research um, Blue Zones. Do you know what Blue mm-hmm. Zones are? Yeah, yeah. People that live yeah. above, uh, beyond 100. Yeah, so it's so it's uh, an it's, area, an area, an area, geographical yeah, it's, it's, area. It's, it's it's geographical areas around the around the globe where people, on average, live above a hundred. And there's mm-hmm. there's there's like I don't know a, a handful of factors that have been identified that that allow people to live that long, not only mm-hmm. stay alive but also be like mentally sharp, right? Yep. And and. And how do you make that happen? And one of the key factors is exactly what you just said. It's having a solid community, right? That's just like yeah. a fabric that's stitched really, uh, really well. And walkability is another one, right? Just like natural exercise, not necessarily lifting weights or anything like that, but even getting up to change. Mm-hmm. I don't know if we even TVs allow us to do this anymore, but like instead of using the remote, change the channel by getting up and uh, doing it on the TV itself. I was going to say turn, yeah. the, turn the dial. Um, but there, there's also a very good documentary on Netflix um, that's that's about blue zones that I highly recommend as well. Okay, sorry, go ahead. What was the second? No, thing? no, no. I, I think that's great. No, I think that's uh, that's a good point. By the way, we have one in the U.S. It's, it's in uh, Southern California, mm-hmm. um, somewhere in Southern California. So uh, the second thread, though, to solve is seniors that are renting or don't necessarily have a, a you know, and they increase and, and rent prices go up where they need to move or they live with family. Um, basically, it, it, the, the second thread is finding housing for seniors that don't have their own housing and for whatever reason need to move. I think that that's the the supply issue, right? That's the issue of you know, technology won't, well, technology may solve it, but that's the second piece, right? Like let's say for example, um, a, an, uh, an elder lives with their children who's married or adult children who are married. Now that couple, the, the children are having kids. That room where the elder is staying may need to be required for that child that's going to grow up in that house or maybe lives in a city where rent is going up and they didn't necessarily live in a rent controlled um, apartment. Now they need to go search for new housing and then they realize, oh man, I'm so old. Like, I, you know, I, I, I would love to, you know, I need to either find an apartment that's the same quality as this one versus it's probably going to be poor because the, the rent's gone higher if they pay the same rent. Or they may need to move to a neighborhood where it's it's maybe dangerous or bad just to live there. And then just they become depressed and alone and get out of their, their community that they're so used to. However, I one, one positive, hopefully optimistic vision, and this is really optimistic. And, and this is, I don't even know if this is, being considered, but hopefully it is, is being able, and I think it is actually, my, you know, thinking about leveraging automation and AI in combination with yeah. construction to create modular housing, even if it's not, even if those greedy corporations, please spare the seniors. Like you can, you know, you're going to, you're going to drain us for money. I get it, but you can spare at least the seniors where or the government comes in and they can say, look, for seniors, we're going to have to build you know, cost efficient modular housing where, Hey, we can build it in 30 days. We can build a house because it's just almost like 3d printed with construction, right? This is a beauty. This is, this is, this, this is like an optimistic, beautiful result that without a doubt can happen with AI, as long as the right players, you know, 
execute this where you could yeah. participate. Yeah. It might not be the, you know, it could actually be a beautiful house. It doesn't have to be, a, you know, it doesn't have to be a, uh, an ugly, you know, plain a looking shack. house. It could be a beautiful house. It, yeah. yeah. It doesn't have to be a shack <laughs> because it's all coded. It's all automated, right? It's like, you can almost pre-design it once you design a beautiful senior housing with great lighting, big windows, you know, things that seniors need, maybe an outdoor space, bathrooms that are accessible from the bedroom, really well thought out design, have a blueprint, feed it to a machine that runs the construction, give it all the raw materials that it needs, build the house, right? The raw materials, now when you when you lower the cost of labor to build the house, because you don't need a bunch of like hundreds of people to build these houses and you just have machines that are stamping these homes out, that should be able to solve for the problem in the future, hopefully. Honestly, I wish that would apply to all housing to some extent, but we know that's a that's going to be a, a battle of the future. I, I, I yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, so to your point, not only does it lower the cost of labor and the the cost to the, the cost per house, let's call it uh, to, mm-hmm. to to you know in, in that modular stack. Um, yeah. but it, it also, it, it conserves land space, right? Which is, yep. which, which is in, in, in a way, um, there's a shortage for that too. Um, so, so yeah, I agree with you. I, I think that I, I wish we could find that article that, that we exchanged that, that talked about modular construction and, and just how 3d printing would be a, a big part of that. Uh, um, that's right. There, I remember there's that. some, yeah, this there's some surreal. excellent points in there. Um, and, and we're starting to see it now. Um, I, th- there's also, Anyway, so th- that's okay. So we covered three solutions, right? So like three possible mm-hmm. solutions to to address this. So number one was um, w- one surprisingly that New York, you know, a municipality suggested, which was shared housing, right? Get younger people to live with older mm-hmm. people. I think it's a fantastic idea that I ho- that hopefully spreads across the nation. Um, living in a place longer, fantastic idea, mm-hmm. especially as assistive technology devices start to. Yep. become a, um, integrated in, into that process a little bit more. Um, to that point, I highly recommend people check out the Can Go Smart Cane. Um, let me just see if I can. Yeah, can.co is the website. Smart Cane that keeps you safe, active, and connected. Love it. Um, nice. And I'll also share um, the, the interview about it just so in case people are interested, you know, to dive in. And then we also spoke about modular construction, right? I Mm-hmm. Fantastic solution uh, helps address a lot of the pain points in, in in this issue. There's a fourth one that I thought was a little bit out there, but I'm gonna mm-hmm. I'm gonna pitch it. Would love to hear okay. your thoughts. Go for so, it. So with, and I don't want anyone jump, jumping down my throat on this, but it's it's just like lots with the decline of um, of religion, right, or, or people who are actually attending church. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of churches that are going out of business, let's say. Right. Okay. And, 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 and the reason they're going out of business is, is because people are just not attending those churches physically. They're not donating when mm-hmm. they do attend. And so as a result, you know, that land costs money. Um, so what happens to that land, right? This is commercial land. Um, can, and, and it's just going to be sitting empty. What will happen there? Are you going to, is it going to get wiped out and you build a Walmart in that area? Right. Mm-hmm. Is it something it, or is that land able to be used, for example, for these modular constructions or, you know, to start building out more of these? Um, he's like basically zoning it for seniors, essentially, around yeah. the country out there. Yeah. But what do you think? It's just it's newly available yeah. land is my point out there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It, um, I don't disagree, although I don't think the the decline of religion is equal in all parts of the country. Uh, or like, but so I think my only other concern about that is like, eventually we, we, we rebuild and repro- I, I mean, I, I agree with the idea. Like I actually think including religious buildings and commercial buildings that are not being used or office buildings. Like I think New York has a pretty decent, for example, where we live, that's NYC has a pretty decent, com- like our office space is actually one of the top right now being used. It's not number one, but it's high up there. But cities like San Diego, cities like LA, their office spaces are are, are almost completely empty, like very low office. Uh, and I know we're not, I, I know that even in New York, we're not at pre-pandemic level 
but we're still we've recovered as one of the best. San Francisco, LA, California, the West Coast, everybody who's very technologically, you know, a lot of jobs are tech based. They're all embrace remote work. So we have a lot of office buildings as well that much like you mentioned with the religious building, I think are empty. Why not repurpose those for senior housing as well if we know it's a crisis? If we know that housing is a crisis and, and how and, and and especially senior housing housing is a crisis, why don't we, as maybe I don't know if it's the job of the government uh, or local politicians, but why not prioritize that as a key um, key what do you call it like a key initiative to to start saying hey this year we're going to trans we're going to take at least twenty percent of anything that sits empty whether it be a church whether it be an office. Or even commercial space, and we're gonna mo- we're gonna if it's not filled in by these owners, or there's no if we don't see that it's actually fulfilled, we're gonna start either taxing you. Hot, we're actually gonna start you know fining you or taxing you, so that the owners of those spaces are required. You know it, they're 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 basically motivated to either use those spaces or give them up to the government. The government will buy them out and say, hey, look, we'll buy you out. We'll, we'll buy out your space. You're not using it. We have a we have a we have a crisis right now, and we should go ahead and be, uh, repurpose this for housing. Yeah, I mean, what what better uh, what what better definition is there, or be, what better use case is there for eminent domain, mm-hmm. where the government comes in and kind of takes over the private land, and you know pay, yeah. pays pays Clear let's issue, say, right? let, let's say a fair value uh, for it. That's the key to thing. This. Fair. fair. Exactly. That's the key thing. It's got to be fair value. We're not saying do it communist style. I know a lot of you libertarians are probably, oh, you can't have the government <laughs> come in here and, and, and taking you know, the land. It's like, no, it's like you'll be all. I mean, it's number one, it's it's fair. It, it, they're going to be pay, paid a fair value. You can say yes. You can say no. If you don't, the government does have the right, I believe, to start fining you, at least taxing you higher for something that's counterproductive to the society as a whole right in these locations right so because of your decision to especially in big cities established and very well developed cities like LA San Diego I would even say New York um, where you if you don't in San Francisco if you if if what you're you've got this piece of land this church you've got this office but you you, you know this is a, a high density city that is an economic heart these are the economic heart of our of our country and if you don't, and if what you're doing is harmful to the greater good, then okay, keep your land. But we're going to then chart, we're going to only tax you because we need to make changes that'll benefit the country as a whole as well, not just you, right? We need to start thinking that way. You know, you can own it. Well, you could, you have a choice either. Re, you can keep the land, repurpose it and, and, and rent it out to seniors for a, you know, a decent price that they can afford. Or if not, give it up, and we'll find an incentive to make you give it up, right? But fairly, not just steal it from you. We're gonna, we're gonna incentivize you to get rid of it because it's not really providing value to everybody else. You know, it, it's 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 interesting, right? Because it, especially, I'm just gonna throw this idea out there. I'm yeah. formulating it as I speak, but something you said spark, sparked this. Um, so if you take these churches that are going out of business, they're going to give up the land regardless because they can't fill the occupancy of you know people yeah. coming in for service. Can you use that land uh, to actually attract more seniors by converting that land or at least a part of that land into these modular living facilities? So like part church part living facility. And now who's going to be more invested in church and has more free time than older people. Right. So so there's there's some like, there's some synergy there, which is kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, That's a cool, that's a cool like fusion. Yeah. Yeah. So, so not only can you grow back your, your religious, um, you know, worshiper base, uh, but you're giving them affordable housing, which is, uh, which, which is kind of, which is kind of fascinating actually. That's, that's an incredible thought. Um, Wow. Yeah, it's like a mix. I feel, of, about, I feel good about that. Description. Yeah, yeah, it's an incredible <laughs> thought. I like that because it's yeah, because it's like it's like, hey, look, keep keep what you have, but we're going to incentivize because I think in America we need to work with incentives versus forcing somebody's hand. Right, it just doesn't sure. work with the way carrot we, not stick. Uh, yeah, yep, yep. Carrot not stick. It's just the way that's culturally how our government works, our country works. So we need to incentivize somebody who owns those churches and say, hey, which by the way if we're talking just churches, I mean, any religion, 
this is literally what you're, this is the whole point of the religion is to give back and to give to the community, right? So just putting that out there. So by being able, that's an excellent way to give back, right? People who have lived in our country, have worked hard all their life and have um, really supported us and build the, the world that we have today. Why don't we, even from the smallest person, why don't we give them the opportunity to have a home, be able to engage with the society, the, the community of the church, even if they're not part of that religion. I think just opening it up to, to engage with others, I think would be a great idea. I mean, I love that idea personally. I do realize that we're almost, we're actually, we're out of time. I don't know, Max, Good if you want to last thoughts. Yeah? yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think, I think this was very interesting. Well, let's, let's see. I would love to see if any of these um, possible solutions do get implemented and which ones end up really taking the lead. Um, which yeah. out of those four, which one do you think has the highest chance of success? The shared housing. So young people and old people live together, living in place with assisted technology modular construction or or the one out of left field which was you know converting churches into uh affordable housing i i think the most realistic one that's going to succeed is the the second one say it in place with assistive technology of some sort i think that is the lowest hanging fruit and it's the most applicable and, but, but, to but, but, but but yep exactly and, and still very impactful by the way uh mm -hmm. but it's definitely the lowest hanging fruit so yeah, the, the one that I see being far away probably is the honestly I think I think the assist the, the living together one. Really interesting. The so the one, one that yeah. that New York is pushing for is the one that you think will have the uphill battle. I think so. I think so. I just don't think it appeals to young people. I think people have an idea of what it is to like have you know live in your twenties and thirties, and part of that doesn't include. Uh, you know, an elder living in your home. Who knows? Who knows? I could be wrong. Let's I see, would love to hear what people think. Yeah. More probable. Yep. The church one. All right. <laughs> I, I think it's more probable. Yeah. I like, I mean, it's, it's not a bad, it's, it's a win-win in my opinion. That's why. Awesome. Wrap it up. Cool. All right. That's been in the future. Episode 16. Talk to you guys later. <laughs>